So, it's been about a week since my last video on Battlefield 1. I've been away doing some other things that have meant I've been far too busy to do anything else. And you'll find out about those things soon enough. But I thought I'd bring you an update on the server lag situation that's still plaguing this game right now. Last week, a patch was deployed to all platforms. And that was supposed to remove the annoying issue that was introduced with the Tsar DLC back at the start of September. The issue had been present in the CTE beforehand, and I feel like DICE had their hands tied with the release date, and they simply decided to push the DLC live, in spite of the issues still being present. When the DLC has been cooking for nearly six months, I don't think the community would have taken too kindly to yet another delay. So nearly a week now after the patch, and it seems that that patch didn't quite fix the issues that it was supposed to. Many players are still experiencing server lag all across the game, regardless of the game mode being played. I played several rounds of Conquest yesterday, and a few different operations to grind out some of the service assignments, and at various points the lag was so bad it was stopping me from switching weapons and pulling out gadgets. That's something that didn't happen, at least to me, before the patch. I couldn't hurdle over objects consistently, and I was sort of running like I was swimming against the current of a river. I kept getting sort of pushed backwards and rubber banding a little bit. Now, of course, I play on PC, so I'm not 100% certain how other platforms are being affected, but I've heard some people saying on the Xbox One there aren't too many issues, but the PS4 was suffering quite badly before the patch, and it may still be suffering badly now. An issue like this is one of the most visible to a player as it affects almost every action that they try and perform in an online environment. So it can become extremely frustrating when you try and play and your experience is ruined not by your own internet connection, but by the servers the game is running on. If the patch didn't fix all the issues then, what is DICE trying to do now to get this situation cleared up? Well, first of all, it appears that DICE are still collecting data where people are experiencing server lag. After I tweeted out yesterday that I was still having an issue, a couple of developers asked if I could record my gameplay with the server lag present and the network performance graph enabled. Now, to do that, you have to go into advanced gameplay settings and turn it on, and then a graph will appear on the right-hand side of your screen. Might not make a huge amount of sense to you, but to the developers, it's got lots of different data streams on there that will be able to tell them what issue you are experiencing during this server lag incident. Even myself, I don't really know what half of these things mean, but if you were to give it to a developer, I'm sure it would be much more helpful than if the graph wasn't there. I don't believe there's an official place that you can submit any gameplay to the developers. I mean, you could stick it on Reddit, but most people wouldn't really find that very entertaining. So if you tweet any of the developers saying you've got server lag, before you do that, go back and record a little bit of gameplay with the network graph enabled whilst you've got the server lag, and then send them a link to that gameplay, and then at least they can look at what's going on and maybe pass it to the right person. Unfortunately, as I said, there's no official place for people to submit this stuff, and I feel like that would be good, considering the issue is still pretty bad. I've also heard rumours that it's the European servers hosted in Ireland that might be causing most of these issues. In North America, it appears that players aren't having half the trouble that European players are. Most of our servers are hosted in Ireland somewhere. This isn't 100% confirmed, it's just information from a friend who played on a few different server locations to see if the issue persisted, and he said he had a better situation on North American East Coast servers than he did on Irish servers, even though he lives in the EU. So, he might have a point there. It seems, however, there may be some truth to this scenario, as David Serland, a producer over at DICE Stockholm, he appeared to wade into the conversation on Twitter the other day. BF Bulletin, a Twitter news account for Battlefield 1, he replied to one of his followers regarding the server lag and the issue being more severe on Irish servers. And David chimed in stating that they'll possibly be moving servers to another location, Frankfurt in Germany. Now, I'm not a network engineer, so I'm not 100% sure what this change will actually do, but it's possible that the issues could be linked to the servers actually hosting the games, as much as the Battlefield 1 server build could be to blame as well. 
It'll be interesting if we do see some sort of server location shift across Europe, because Europe is the most populated area for Battlefield 1 globally. If they all move from Ireland to Germany, or in Frankfurt in Germany, that could change the situation entirely, or it might not change it at all, and it might be that the code within Battlefield 1 is causing the problem. There are so many different variables that could be attributing themselves to this problem, I would not want to be a server engineer at DICE right now trying to fix this problem. They're going to have to go over every single scenario until they find the right answer. At the moment, they're still working on it, but there's been no further information, nothing clear-cut about what they're going to be doing to try and fix this problem. Now, with all that doom and gloom being said, I'd like to move on to something that's more positive for Battlefield 1 at the moment, and that's the free trial of the Battlefield 1 DLC which is going on, and that's bumped up the player count quite significantly across the three platforms. Peak player counts this weekend were back to above 200,000, which for a game reaching its first birthday very soon is extremely impressive. To give you a comparison to what a really dead game looks like, which is what every YouTube comment section will tell you Battlefield 1 is, even though it clearly isn't, let's look at the peak concurrent players for Lawbreakers. That's a game that launched in August 2017. So, you know, 10, 11 months after Battlefield 1. At the moment, 187 players is the peak for the last 24 hours on PC, and the all-time peak is just 7,400. So for everyone who keeps saying Battlefield 1 is dead, you can just jog on a little bit. Sure, the game could have done with a better DLC plan, maybe one that didn't leave massive gaps in between each DLC, and maybe it should have had a better progression system to keep those original players entertained for longer, but we are at the tail end of the game's life now, and we still have a very healthy six-figure player count for Battlefield 1. And in just over six months' time, the last DLC for the game will release, and our sights will be set firmly on Battlefield 2018. And in my head, I'm already looking in that direction. I think all of these free trials that are happening for Battlefield 1, where players who've got the base game, they can play all the DLC for a couple of weeks without having to pay a penny, I think that's a test for Battlefield 2018. The idea appears to be keeping all of the community together, and as you can see, when free DLC drops, the player numbers go up. So if the free DLC model was applied to Battlefield 2018, where all players had to do was buy the base game, and then every single update that came out after that was free, even if players went away in between DLCs, we'd always see a big jump in player numbers when that next DLC dropped, because people don't have to pay for it. And for those dedicated players who stick around in between each DLC because they really like the game they're playing, then they're not punished by not being able to play the new content because the community is all kept together in one unit and all of the DLC is simply just added to the content that was already there rather than being split off into chunks that you have to pay to access. So the community stays together as a whole, all that new content gets played, and I have a feeling that these trials for Battlefield 1 are tests for Battlefield 2018 to see how that would go. Some people then asked me on Twitter the other day how EA would justify making the DLC free if they couldn't then make money in some other way, and I would argue that they are trying to make money in some other way. Look at FIFA 18, brand new game just came out today or yesterday I think in the UK, and people are already spending hundreds of pounds on opening packs even though they've paid full price for the game. That's just the way I see AAA games moving nowadays. If you don't want a season pass DLC model that splits up the player base, then something else has to be offered in order to make money where you now can't make money on the DLC. If Battlefield 2018 does something more extravagant with the battle pack system, but still keeps it cosmetic or not game changing if somebody were to buy lots of those packs, I'd have absolutely no problem with Battlefield 2018 having microtransactions. FIFA 18 does it, Call of Duty is going to be doing it, Star Wars Battlefront 2 is going to be doing it, and I see no reason why Battlefield 2018 won't go down the same route. 
But there we go. I just went on a massive tangent and I didn't really mean to. I, I genuinely didn't mean to. My script is way shorter than what this video turned out to be. But I'm going to end the video there. The server lag fix is ongoing. It's far from being perfect. But the lag appears to not be as infecting as many games as it did before. Or at least that's the case in my experience. Leave me your comments and thoughts down below in the comment section as always. I'll be reading as many as I can. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.